for tuning in. We are blessed that you and your family be part of what God is doing here at this church. Take time right now to watch this. I pray it's a blessing to you. Raise your hands, shout your amen, sing along, drop your prayer requests in the comments section. Say hello to us. Let us know that you're here because you truly are here with us. We want you involved, but be sure, take time and be ready to let grace change you. Good morning, church. We'll try it again. Good morning, church. Good morning. God is good. I'm going to teach you all a thing. Okay. So God is good. You guys say all the time. Then I say all the time. You all say God is good. All right. So let's try it again. God is good. All the time. Amen. Let's stand in worship this morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. It's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes, bless the Lord.
worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, now worship your holy name. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Maybe see it this morning. Appreciate the goodness of God. If you're glad to be here, say amen. Got a few things to say first. Let me say this first and foremost. Uh, thank you to all the visitors this morning. If this is your first time. We're so glad that you would be with us. We know there's a thousand places you could have went, but you've chose to be with us here, and we don't take that uh, lightly. So we say thank you so much, church. Make them feel welcome this morning. And those watching online this morning as well, we are live on Facebook. So if you want to get on your phones for a moment and share that, that'd be a blessing. Help us continue to share that. Uh, over 80,000 people get to watch and hear the gospel through Facebook Live every year. We're now going to uh, YouTube as well. So we appreciate our media guys back there and all they do. And, uh, of course, we thank you for that. We've got a grief share program we've been starting. It'll be every third Thursday of the month at 6 o'clock. They'll meet out there in the lobby. And so if you're trying just to find some grace in the middle of your grief, uh, we'd love for you to gather together with us here. Uh, if you're just trying to navigate losing a loved one, somebody uh, has died in your life, has passed on, and you're just trying to wonder how do you carry on, you feel all by yourself, you feel alone, uh, there is a group of people that believe and trust God and want to do that with you and walk along with you. So Thursdays, every third Thursday of the month, 6 o'clock, just out there in the lobby. And uh, you can see Rochelle Tuttle or Jennifer Skowinski over there, and they'll get you more details. You can also get on our Church Center app, and uh, you can find more details there as well. Uh, we do have our app. We'll go ahead and mention that since I just threw that, go ahead and throw that up there, our Church Center app. If you don't have this yet, I would highly recommend you download this. Everything that we'll start doing, all of our events, all of our communication will come through this app. So if we cancel service, something happens, we're going to have a special service, something you need to know, it'll actually go straight to your phone, give you a notification that this is happening. So once you get your phones out right now and scan that QR code if you don't have that, I promise you you're going to be missing out on important information. Eventually you can give through that, sign up for events, registration, check your kids next door. So if you've already got kiddos next door, you can check Check them in before you get here, walk up, they can scan your phone, and you're, you're done. And so it makes things a lot quicker and easier there as well. Uh, other than that, we've got our Kids of Grace. The kiddos next door are doing their classes right now. But on August the 6th, they're going to have a back-to-school event at both the 915 service and the 11. They'd love for you to be part of that. Following that service at 11 o'clock, they're going to be an open house. So if you've got kiddos next door and you're interested in knowing what they do and, and how class works, uh, they invite you next door after the 11 o'clock service. There'll be refreshments. There'll be some food. Uh, the kids have a special song for you guys, and then you'll get to learn a little bit about what's going on over there. Uh, we've got small groups every Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Ours meet here. I think Jessica and Jason's group meets at 2.30 or something like that at their house. Uh, Travis and Beth has a group that meets. There's about seven groups now uh, meeting all over Bullock County and E-Town. If you'd like to join a small group, we gather together, we fellowship, we eat. Uh, our group's going through Galatians right now. Uh, get on the Church Center app. Go to small groups and just go ahead and sign up for a small group right there, and uh, they'll get you the details really soon. Donna and Steve's class is, they're not here now, but they're, they're starting real soon, and they'd love to have you come by their house as well. Uh, as many of y'all know, last Sunday we had, uh, I don't want to say a loss, uh, Miss Julie Hatfield, a blessing to our church. It's been coming about six weeks now, and uh, we just absolutely fell in love with her. Uh, but last Sunday, she had a heart attack, and she passed away here uh, in the service. And so no doubt that's a time in the flesh that we grieve, we mourn, and we uh, our hearts break, of course. But at the same time, being Christians, knowing that death has been swallowed up, knowing that the grave is no longer victorious over us, and knowing that she knew Christ as our Lord and Savior, we celebrate this. Amen. We know that she went home. Amen. And uh, glory to God goes right there. But we are, of course, left here, and now there's a gap, there's a hole in our family, there's a hole in our hearts, and then their family has to navigate this loss as well. And I, I hate using that word loss, especially for a Christian, because it's not a loss. We, we know exactly where Julie's at. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And man, I, I, I can't, as a, as a Christian, I can't think of any better way to be standing up in the house of God on a Sunday morning 
raising your hands, singing, Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. To close your eyes here and to open your eyes there and realize he really is enough. He really is enough. And so the Bible is so plain that we celebrate today. Let's go ahead and give God some praise that we know where heaven's at. We know where our home's at. We celebrate our hearts this morning. But as a church, we certainly will miss uh, her walking. She had a, a permanent, a smile had a permanent residence upon her face. I mean, she just would walk in smiling. I'll never forget that very first Sunday her and Beverly walked in, uh, and we were doing cardboard testimonies that day. And I met them at the door, and, man, they were right on. They wanted to give their testimony, wanted to come up here, and they came up here together glorifying God. And every time I seen her, every time I seen her, she was saying something glorifying God, and she was always smiling and rejoicing what God has done her life. So we're going to pray just for a moment, just a moment uh, in prayer and thanks to God, praying for the family, uh, praying for our son Caleb and Jacqueline and Kayla, and just praying for that the Hatfield family today as we just trust God uh, for their future. Father, we love you. We lift up our hearts and our hands to you, just saying thank you, Lord, for the truth of life beyond death. God, we thank you for the reality that being absent from this body is, if we're saved, to be present with you. I'm thankful, Lord, to know that she had a testimony, that she understood that you were her Savior and her Lord. And God, I'm so glad to know that she is now a permanent residence of that heavenly home, and I know that I will see her again. There's coming a day, a glad reunion day. And Lord, every single day on this earth, it just seems like that place gets sweeter and sweeter. So God, we rejoice in her life, we rejoice in her love, and then Lord, we rejoice in the fact that we know exactly where she's at. But at the same time, God, our hearts go out to her family, her children, her friends. And we just ask you, God, that you'd bring comfort and peace. That we, God, as we have been comforted, we would offer comfort to them. And we're just glad to know that you are that great comforter in our lives. We bless you and we say thank you now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let's get our men to come forward for our tithe and our offering. We ask you that you give this morning to be a help and to be a blessing to invest into eternal things. You can give in a lot of places, but very few places can you give in investing into eternal things. I got a praise report this morning, Vacation Bible School. We said 83 kids on average every single night. They were able to raise over $1,000, and so as a church, we're going to match it and make sure they have at least $2,000. That $2,000 is going to Malawi, Africa to build a house in Malawi. So the VBS kids were able to do that, and so we just give God the praise. Let's pray over the offering as Reggie is coming to give us our call to worship. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you and we praise you. God, bless now the offering. Bless your people. God, that you would challenge us to truly give this morning. God, the church continues and continues and continues to be a blessing and a help to this community. And we just need partners, God. We need people that would commit their hearts, God, to help and, and to partner with us that we can truly make an impact in this place and in this time. And, God, without the financial partnership of your people, and, God, that's an impossible task. We know, God, you own it all. So, God, just work in our hearts today that we would invest into your kingdom. Bless the giver and the gift. Bless your people. Help us worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. You guys sound good this morning. As I look around, I notice that a lot of members are in here, and I'm grateful for that. I'm so grateful to be in the house of God. But as I notice, I also know that uh, I, I don't know how you got here, but I know that there are some people here that are first time, and I'm so grateful that you're here. Can I tell you that you are where you're supposed to be, that this is the house of God, and that you're where you're supposed to be by a divine appointment by God? As I was reading earlier this week, I was led to Hebrews 12, which is run with patience. Wherefore, seeing we also co are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Can you look to your neighbor and say cloud of witnesses? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Aren't you grateful for a Savior that was unashamed? despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Don't miss this part. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. I understand that coming in these doors, there's a lot. I'm a dad and a husband, and I understand that uh, it can be troubling getting up just to make it here, but I'm so grateful that you're here. 
and the Lord has a plan for your life. This is a divine appointment. So if you find yourself worn out and worried from the things that this world is trying to offer you, I, I, I would advise you to look to Jesus. Jesus is telling us right here in verse 3, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint. If you find yourself worried and worn out, look to the cross of what he done. He was looking at the joy that was set before him so that he wouldn't be faint and wearied in his mind. I just ask you, let it all go right now. Let it all go. The bills, the anxiety, the depression, the unforgiveness, the bitterness, whatever has your attention, whatever has your mind right now, let it all go and give the praise to the one that is worthy of it all. Amen. Let's stand and continue in worship this morning. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. You're hidden.
What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus.
you're freeing hearts right now you are the same god you are the same god you touch the letters that i feel your touch right now you are the same god you are the same How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son and make a wretch his tree. I will 
Jesus Christ is death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my
I don't understand, but ever you want to. Or if it's scary, make room for you. To do whatever you want to, even if I don't like it. Whatever you want to, because your way is better. Your way is better. Amen, amen, glory to God. Man, I hope you mean that when you sing it. Man, I hope you mean that. Let's open our Bibles this morning to Colossians chapter 1. And uh, just really appreciate what the Lord is doing this morning. If you enjoyed that worship, say amen. And, uh, great, great singing. Miss Rachel did a great job filling in our Worship team is, in my opinion, one of the best in the world. Amen. Let's go ahead and give them some praise. Amen. Let's start. Take that thing off. The time might be next. I don't know. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. We're going to be beginning a series today. And uh, I don't know how long it'll go. It'll go a couple weeks, I'm sure. And uh, my prayer is that it will... Be your surrender. And sometimes the Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And some of what I, I, I want to teach this week and, and the next several weeks is I think the lack of knowledge concerning it is why many of us uh, are struggling so much. You just Sometimes we don't know what we got. <laughs> and so I think if we can get a better idea of that, we'll it'll be a better spot. We're going to read verse 27 of chapter 1 in Colossians. You're there. Just say amen. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. So God is going to, to us, God is going to make known a mystery. And this mystery he is describing as the riches of the glory what is this mystery? What is this thing that God wants to reveal and make known to us? Here it is. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in us is the riches of this glory. Father, we love you. You just give the increase as we continue the thought of the song we surrender this is our surrender this is where we lay it down all our burdens God help us now to surrender and move forward with you twofold prayer God this morning is that those that name your name God would take that next step into their faith to go deeper to, to be more for you to surrender into service. And God, those that are here this morning that are not saved, that never been born again, my prayer is, God, they would trust you today before it's everlasting too late. Blessed, I beg you now, in Jesus' name, amen. Here in Colossians, we see Paul has introduced to us another mystery. He has revealed in Romans through Colossae here so many mysteries already. He has broken down the mystery of the church. He has broken down the, the mystery of, 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 the, of the gospel, the mystery of the cross, the mystery of the rapture. He has introduced to us the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and really a separate book would be necessary to fully expound upon all the truths of these mysteries. But yet here in Colossians, Paul reveals what I believe 
believe to be the biggest of them all. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I mean, who can even hope to understand the depth of a truth like that? I mean, oh, what a truth that the Lord Jesus not only chose to come and, and live in the human flesh, but he also has chosen to take up residence inside of those that are saved this morning. If you're saved and Jesus lives inside of you, give him some praise. This is then the very essence of Christianity, Christ living inside of you. Christianity is not a religion. It's not a code of laws or moral standards. It's not a set of creeds. It is Christ, a, a real living person, one who came to us in the flesh, one who chose to live among us, one who is willing to die for us, one who is now ascended on high, and yet he that lives today in us. He who once gave his life for us now abides in us to give his life to us. He who once died as me now lives in me. What an amazing truth this morning of what we have, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Paul describes it, he says it is the riches of the glory of this mystery. This is no ordinary truth. It is a rich and glorious truth. It is a truth that I believe matters the most. Christ in us is how we are made whole. Christ in us is how we are forgiven. Christ in us is how we are accepted. Christ in us is how we live out this life. Christ in us is how we get to make it to heaven. Christ in us is how I'm a father today. Christ in me is how how I'm a, a husband today. Christ in us is how I can be a pastor. Christ in us is how I get to be a preacher. Christ in you is the only way you get to be anything that matters today. It is because Christ lives in you. Romans 8, 9, but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Notice what he reveals here. He tells us that Christ is in us because his spirit is in us. It's called here in that verse the spirit of God and the spirit of Christ. Christ is only in us because his spirit is now in us. And this is the Holy Spirit or also the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. And this morning I want to dive into what this means, the implications of this great truth. If he truly is the glory of his riches, if it truly is the hope of glory, how many of y'all want to know what that is, amen, and what that means? open our Bibles to John chapter 14. We're going to see a few things. I want to go first in this first week of the series. I want to look in John 14 where I believe really that for the first time this new revelation is expounded upon. In verse 16 the Bible says of John 14, I pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, catch this last phrase, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye shall see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Somebody say amen. Here in John 14, Jesus has just sat down for the final Passover meal. He is preparing his disciples for his death and departure. He starts out in John chapter 14, verse 1. He says, he says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, thou knowest, and the way thou knowest. Thomas said, God, how in the world could we ever know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
His imminent departure is at hand. The cross is growing near, and he is trying his best to comfort them before his crucifixion, and he does that. How How would he ever tell them? I mean, what could ever comfort these disciples for three and a half years? He's walked and talked with them. He's lived with them. He's loved them. He's discipled them. He's counseled them. He's comforted them. He, he has been that, that, that help, that friend. He's been that, that very present help in time of trouble, and now he says, I'm leaving, and not only am I leaving, I'm I'm dying, and not only am I dying, I'm going far, far away, and where I'm going, you can't go yet. I, I'm going to come back one day, but I, I, I can't tell you when that is. How could he ever, how could he ever console them? He does so by saying this, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to give you another comforter. And in verse 16, you'll find that word comforter is capitalized because it's not just talking about some spirit or any spirit, but it is talking about the triune spirit of God, the Holy Ghost of Jesus, the very essence of God in spirit. And so then the big deal for us to understand this morning is that Jesus lives in us if we're saved. And how he does that is through and by the Holy Spirit. And I don't mean to be nasty in the onset, but I, I need you to know, if you're not saved, the Holy Ghost is not inside of you. What separates us from anybody else in the world, God does not look at me and say, man, EJ is just such a good guy, I'm going to save him. He did not look out across heaven and say, man, EJ is just so smart, I'm going to save him. He does not look out upon me right now and say, man, he just does so many good things. I'm taking him to heaven. The only reason I'm going to heaven today is because at one point in my life, I asked God for forgiveness. He gave me the gift of his son inside of me, and now I'm only going to heaven because God belongs in heaven, and when I go, he's got to take me with him. Amen. So if you're going to heaven, it won't be because you're good looking, good smarts, you got anything going on, a good bank account. You're only going to go if you've been saved. If you're not saved, today would be a good day. First, I see then in verse 16 concerning this Holy Spirit, because Christ is in us only because the Spirit is in us. The Spirit of Christ being in us is why we can say Christ is in us. I see in verse 16 then the announcement of the Holy Spirit. I'm working really hard. Y'all pray for me. Just, just kind of be transparent for a second before I preach anymore. I'm trying real hard to slow down. I've been told I speak a million miles an hour. So I, I got to contain my excitement just a little bit so y'all can understand what I'm saying. I heard somebody tell me last week, they said, they said Preacher, that, that sounded really good. I don't know what you said, but it sounded really good. The Bible says in verse 16, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. I find here that Jesus makes them a promise of another helper. In John 14, 16, Jesus says, I'm going to go pray to God, my Father, and I'm going to pray a promise into your life. I'm going to pray a provision into your life that God the Father would listen to God the Son, and he would send to you God the Holy Spirit. And God the Holy Spirit would not just hang out with you for a little while, but look what it says, that he may abide with you forever. That word abide comes from the word abode. Abode means to take up permanent resident somewhere. How many are glad to be saved and know Jesus lives inside of you? He announces the Holy Spirit is coming. Christ was praying for them then, and guess what? God is still praying for you today. God was making promises to them that, that back then, and God's still making promises to you today. God was providing things for them back then, and God is still providing things for you today. But there is no greater power, there is no greater prayer, there is no greater promise, and there is no greater provision than that which we've already received, if we're saved, the promise, the prayer, the provision of the Holy Spirit of God. Not only was it a promise, but it was a mystery. We covered that in Colossians 1.27. Paul says, I'm revealing to you this mystery. I'm going to make known to you this mystery. Why was it a mystery? It, it, it would make sense that if God's always been existing, then the Holy Spirit would always have been around. But And while the Holy Spirit has always been around, it has not always been to us in this capacity. I want you to understand just for a moment in verse 16, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit won't just come for a little while, but he's coming to live in us forever. He didn't 
didn't say, I'm going to come for a little while so you mess it up and then leave. He didn't say, I'm going to come to you sin, then I'm leaving. He didn't say, I'm going to come to you forget that I'm leaving. He said, I am coming to stay forever. I don't care what your pastor said, your preacher said, the Pope said. I don't care what CNN said, the president said. I don't care what anybody says. Jesus said the Holy Spirit was coming to stay forever. Somebody say amen. That's almost a spot you should high-five your neighbor and say forever. Amen. <laughs> He's not only going to be forever, but it's going to be in us, he said. That, that, that's, that's a big deal. Because never before in the history of the world had the Holy Spirit ever been inside of a man. God's chosen people was Israel. He had some of the greatest men of history. Hebrews lays out the hall of faith and mentions so many men. But can I tell you this morning that Abraham did not have what you and I have? Moses did not have it like this. David did not have it like this. Samson did not even have it like this. The Holy Spirit would come down and the Bible would say this, and the Spirit rested upon him, or the Spirit was upon him, but never once in the history of the world was the Spirit inside of any of them. So I've come to tell you that the same Spirit that was on Abraham, that allowed Abraham to lead the nation of Israel, the same Spirit that was inside, on Moses, that allowed him to deliver uh, his, the, 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 the Christians or the, or the, 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 the Jews are out of the bondage of Egypt, the same power that allowed Moses to part the Red Sea, the same power that gave David to kill giants and be a man after God's own heart, the same power that allowed Elijah to pray down a fire from heaven, and the same power that gave Samson the strength to kill thousands of Philistines is now the same power that's not just on you and I. It's the same power, if you're saved, that lives inside of you. You've got something David didn't have, Moses didn't have, Abraham didn't have. You've got something in you, honey. Not only do I see the announcements, but then I begin to see the characteristics. If this power is now in us, what does that mean? If this power is now dwelling inside of believers, what is the significance of that? If it's inside of us forever, what does that mean to you and I? Well, first, I find uh, that the first characteristic that's mentioned is in verse 17. I find the Holy Spirit is a person. Say, so what do you mean, preacher? Well, look in verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I didn't do real good in school, but that's called personification. It has given human attributes, amen, to a spiritual thing. So you realize today that the Holy Ghost is not just some ambiguous thing out in the world. Uh, the Holy Ghost is the divine third person of the Holy Trinity. That means God, the creator of all things, uh, has taken up permanent residence inside of you. Somebody help me this morning. Ain't that a big deal? Jesus, God. The Son, the Father, the Holy Ghost now lives in you. He is our now divine comforter. That means this, that when you're in a low spot in your life and you need some, a friend, you need help, he is that friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He is that ever-present help in times of trouble. He is, I lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the hills. You, I, I want you to, I love that verse. I love that verse. I love that verse. But I want you to realize that he was looking up to the hills because his help was outside coming down. I, I'm telling you telling you today, I don't have to look to the hills. I don't have to look you far off. My help lives inside of me. My help's right here. All I've got to do is say, God, Father, friend, Holy Spirit, I need you. And he's there. He's there. He's there. Not only does he comfort me, but he discomforts me. I know y'all don't know nothing about this because y'all are perfect. Y'all have never sinned, y'all have never messed up, y'all are just, I mean, y'all are just so cute and cuddly, and y'all just, but me, I, I, I'm still toe up from the flow up. And I found this, he does comfort me, but I feel like most of his time is discomforting me. Y'all ever seen that V8 commercial when they, they smack him on the forehead and they said, you should have had a V8. I feel like that's God's biggest job in my life, just smacking me in the forehead saying, you should have done this. 
I said, I wish you'd have whispered that in my ear before you had to hit me in the head. He said, I did, but you didn't listen to me. <laughs> God's greatest job is as comforter, sure, but generally he has come to discomfort us in our sin. He has come to convict the world of their sin. Oh, preacher, you said a three-letter word. It's not, you're a bunch of sinners. I know Joe Osteen ain't going to say it to you, so let me say it to you. You're a bunch of sinners. All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm the only sinner in the building? He that hath not sinned cast the first stone. I feel like I should duck in this church where y'all are acting this morning. <laughs> the Holy Ghost convicts us of our sin. If there was no sin to convict us, uh, he, the matter of fact, Jesus went on to say this, and I think it's in 1 John, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar. <laughs> so if you say you have not sinned, then you're a sinner because you're sinning by saying you have not sinned. Catch 22 is a conundrum. You can't, you're a sinner. We just all sin. But if you do sin, he says, children, he says, uh, worry not because you have an advocate with the Father. That word advocate's the same word comforter. You realize that when we sin, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. I'm glad in my lowest valleys, God is still a friend. God is still showing me right from wrong. Notice he does not, he does not pretend my sin's okay, though. This was not in my sermon, the 915 service. They must have been a lot better than y'all. But today, this word tolerance is going around that acts like just because we disagree with you that we're wicked or we're wrong, and that tolerance means we have to disagree with. Oh, look, look, the Holy Ghost very rarely agrees with me about anything. <laughs> he still loves me. He still cares about me. But he loves me enough to let me know when I'm wrong and what wrong is. I know I've said it a million times, but I can't get away from this picture. I, I, if my children was running out across 65 right now, the most loving thing I could do would be to run out there, snatch them up by their wrists, their ankles, their head, whatever I can get a hold of. Snatch them up so their feet are still kicking in the air. Somebody say amen. And wear their butts out all the way back to this church. And say, I love you, stinking knucklehead. Don't you ever do that again. I know that looked like fun. I know that was cool. I know it was loud. I know it was fast. But those cars will kill you, and you don't realize you're too young. You're too blind to see the danger in what you're doing. What you're doing is wrong. Don't do it again. And you say, man, he's a good, he's a good daddy. That's exactly what he should have done. Risk his own life to take care of his kids and correct them. Now, how loving would it be to say, man, look at my kids out there having so much fun. Oh, I know I don't agree with it, but man, it's ain't they look so happy out there doing what they're doing. That's stupid. The problem is we don't see the danger in sin. But thanks be unto God, he loves us enough to discomfort us, to disagree with us, and to confront us in the situation we're in. I'm glad that my friend is a true friend, and he tells me the truth even when it ain't fun. He's my divine comforter, he's my divine discomforter, and he is my divine companion. He is the same as Christ was to them, he is to us. When he said, I am giving you another comforter, what he was saying was this. He was saying, the same way I was your friend in the flesh, you're now going to have that in the spirit. And me and you are so, we're so silly at times because we say things like, man, wouldn't it have been so cool to walk and talk with Jesus? But, I mean, I can walk and talk with Justin. I, I mean, this is a, you know, we can be, I can hug Justin. We can talk. We can walk. But, I mean, but, but that's as close as I want to get to Justin. Amen. But God, God, the same comforter, I, I'm going to give you another comforter. I'm going to give you another, I'm going to give you a piece of myself. But this time. The same way I counseled them and helped them and advocated with them, was a friend to them, provided for them, protected them, taught them. That same way I did that in the flesh, I'm now going to do that, but I'm going to live inside of you. We got something better than they got. We, we've got, we, y'all didn't help me now. We have got something better. You don't believe it or you'd shout this morning. We have got something better than what they had. 
We have got a divine companion and intimate union with Jesus Christ. He now lives in us. So therefore I see that the Spirit of Christ that God, is God in us. As Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God in us. I see the characteristics, I see the power of the Holy Ghost as the person of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost. You realize he has come to transform you. He is not interested in making you the best version of yourself. He's trying to kill you. And that is the biggest fight. We don't realize that we're trying our best to survive, and he's trying our best to, his best to kill us. And we can't figure out what's going on. But if we get on the same team as him and let him let, kill ourselves too, we'd be a lot happier. Now, look, now, look, I gotta be very careful because some of y'all are just simple enough to think, oh, I gotta go kill myself now. No. <laughs> as I said that, the Holy Ghost said, hey, be careful. You're in Bullet County. You gotta explain these. He's trying to make you look, act, live like Jesus. So what does that look like, preacher? This is real deep. It's real deep. The Bible. Well, why don't I look like Jesus? Because you ain't read the Bible. <laughs> and you're trying to look at like you every single day. You, 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 we're not reading the Bible like we should be. We're not listening to preaching like we should be. We're not responding to preaching. This altar ain't for me. This altar's for, hey, look, the altar's for you. Well, I should, it is for me too, but I mean like in this case when you're getting preached this morning, it's for you to respond to that preaching. God shows you something this morning. You say, God, transform me now into that. Conform me to the image of your son. That happens through the Holy Ghost, through Bible preaching, Bible reading, transformation, surrender, saying, God, I don't want to be me. I want to be like you. And the spirit in you that dwells in you, the, the, the living thing in you, begins to shine out from you. And I know I'm wearing a suit this morning, but I promise you, it ain't in a suit. It's not in a way you dress this morning. It ain't whether you have tattoos or don't have tattoos or rings or no rings or purple hair, pink hair, brown hair, gray hair, bald like Brother Rusty back here. Amen. He's transformed us. Verse 20, at that day you shall know that I'm in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Because he's in me, I'm now a saint. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. I'm not a saint because of who I am or what I've done. I'm a saint because of who he is and what he's done in me. I'm now a member of the family. I'm not a member of the family because I've done some great deed. I'm a member of the family because the Bible says in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Ephesians 2, 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You and I, me this morning, I at one time in my life was real, real far away. But Jesus died for me. I called upon his name. I believed on his name. He made me a member of his family and drawed me in real close to him. If you've got that, say amen. And I have access, the Bible says, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. I see he transforms me. He guides me. There's a promise of the Father. He said this, my, my sheep know my voice. What's the point of knowing his voice if you ain't listening to it? My children every now and again will do something, and they still genuinely at times, they don't, you know, as they're growing older, the things, the circumstances changes, there's still times, even my 10-year-old, she'll do something that I, I'm like, you know what, you probably didn't know better. And when they don't know better, when I really genuinely think they did not know, I teach them. You don't correct. You don't, you don't train. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't whip their butts for doing something that they genuinely did not, not the first time. You teach them. But after you've taught them and now you know, and they do what they know they should not do, you can't teach them again. They've already been taught. Now you've got to correct them. And the Bible's very plain. He says that he, those that he loves, he chasteneth as a father. He says if you don't have chastening, you're a bastard. I didn't say that. Jesus said it. Amen. Don't be mad at me. Jesus said that. 
So what I'm saying this morning is that God, through his voice, will correct us, will lead us, will teach us. He will teach us all things. He will give us all understanding so we can walk in the precepts of his way, so we can walk in the power of the, 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 the spirit, so we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But once he teaches us and then we don't do it, he has to correct us. But the glory thing of this is this, even in his correcting hand or his teaching voice, he loves us enough to guide us. And of all the things in my life, all the things in my life that I could point to God in my life, here's one that you can never separate from me in my heart is this, is that I know God's real because he's leading me every day of my life. It's just, it's just too, it's just, I mean, it's, it's too tangible in my life. The things he is leading me to do that are absolutely contrary to my thinking, my ways, my, what I would want. I mean, I, I love you guys, I love you guys, I love you guys. But I promise I would not be pastor in this church, amen, if I was not saved and God led me to do it. I'd have a regular job. I'd be, the, I'd be at the beach or the lake every weekend. I like skiing and snowboarding and, and, and wakeboarding. And I like laying out, not, not really, but amen. I like fishing. Somebody help me out. You know why I'm here? Because the Holy Ghost of God stole my life. He did. I ain't mad about it. I'm enjoying it. It's another way I know. I know that the Holy Ghost of God's real because I'm enjoying this. I didn't even like church before I got saved. I went 23 years never wanting to step foot in the church. Had no desire. Had a, me and Bill Bill was at, at a place last night talking to a young lady and trying to invite her to church. She said, I don't like church people. I said, me either. <laughs> I don't. I only like you because God lives in me. Amen. I promise you. That's how I know God's real. He has changed my life. And this is what I also know. He wants to do more in your life, and he wants to do more in my life. So, God, we need more of the Holy Ghost. I love you, Bill. I love you. I love you. But we don't need more of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost needs more of you. You got all the Holy Ghost you can handle when you got saved. God is not trying to give you more of himself. He's just trying to get less of you in you so he has more room to abide, guide, and lead. So this is where I surrender. I see the promise of direction, the promise of remembrance. He powers me to teach, to witness, to live this thing out. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to comfort me when I need comforting, to convict me when I need convicting, to regenerate in me when it was time for my regeneration, and to illuminate these scriptures in our hearts and our lives. If you're saved this morning, if you're, if you're saved, and guess who knows if you're saved? Not me, you. There's one person in this world that I know, that I know, that I know is saved. And most days I don't like him. I wish, I really do, I wish when God saved you, he put a mark on you somewhere. I'd be like, save, save, lost, save, save, lost, save. Like, that'd make my job so much easier. Because then when you're acting like hell, I say, well, it's because you lost, amen. But, uh, you know, when you're pretending to be real cool and real good and real churchy, it makes my job a little easy too. Because anybody can act. But when you die to yourself and let God live in you, something changes. If you're saved, listen to me for a moment. If, you're, if you know, look, he said, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. He's, he's written the Bible that you can know. And if you don't know, if you don't know, you need to. You need to. But if you do know this morning, I want you to realize what lives in you. The same Jesus that walked with them, that empowered the Old Testament saints, that walked with the disciples, is the same God that lives inside of you. And he has all knowledge. The God that spoke earth into existence that spoke trees, and trees were there, water, and water was there, who spun this whole thing together. That same God lives in you. That spirit is inside of you. And he didn't put the spirit in you if you didn't have access to him. 
Why would he, why would he take up residence to hide inside of you? Like just dodge you nonstop. He don't, don't talk to me. I'm not talking to you. No, he, he wanted to be as close as he possibly could be to you so he could communicate with you. So he could speak to you and help you and lead you and guide you and teach you and show you. The book will come alive when you begin to read it through the Spirit. Your worship will come alive when you begin to do it through the Spirit. Loving your wife or loving your husband becomes easier when you do it through the Spirit. Leading your children becomes easier when you do it through the Spirit. Being an employer or employee is so much easier when you do it through the Spirit. Being sober is so much easier when you do it through the Spirit. Uh, walking in love is so much easier when you do it in the Spirit. You cannot, you cannot do this you cannot do this in the flesh if you're saved the Holy Ghost is there to live in you and through you if you're here this morning you need the Holy Ghost you need it it's not some crazy elaborate it's God in you it's Christ in you and I realize people blame all kinds of crazy things on the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is just trying to empower you to do what Christ has called you to do. Miss Rachel sung this morning in the power of the Holy Ghost. Desiree played in the power of the Holy Ghost. Keith played in the power of the Holy Ghost. I love watching Dustin on those drums because I, I, I mean, he plays the drums good, but I like watching him like this and I do like this. Amen. I, I like watching our worship team not just play, but worship in the Spirit. My prayer this morning was, God, help me not preach on the Holy Spirit and not preach in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here to empower you, not just the preachers and the war, every single one of you. And if you're struggling this morning, listen to me. The Spirit has the answer. The Spirit has the answer. You have not because you ask not or you're asking amiss that you'll consume it with your own lust. So God says, I either, I either haven't gave it to you because you ain't asked me for it, or you're asking me and I just agreed you don't really need this. And God is good and all the time. And if that's the case, don't look, don't, don't just say it. If you believe that, that means if he said you don't need it, it's good. If you're here this morning, listen to me, and you've never been saved, I'm not, I'm not mentioning Baptist. I'm not mentioning the church. What I'm saying this morning is what Romans 8, 9 says. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. There's a big word here. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, preacher, does that mean good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell? No. There will be more bad people in heaven than there will be in hell. There will be a lot of good people in hell. Because good people never ask God for his spirit. Good people never see the need. I'm okay. I'm good. Good people are raised in church. Good people sometimes do things for God. Many will come to him in that day, he says, saying, Lord, Lord, knowing his name, knowing his title and his position, we did many things in your name. We cast out demons, many miracles. He will say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Why? Because according to Romans 8 9, his spirit was never in them. So you must conclude it's not about being good or bad, what you do or don't do, what you look like or what you don't look like. There's one thing, one thing, listen to me please, is his spirit in you or is it not in you? And it's not in you through birth. When you're born, listen please, when you're born, you're lacking the spirit of God. I was born lacking the spirit. And look, I'm not even going to blame you, your mom, your dad, I'm going to blame Adam. It goes, all, it goes back that far. Adam messed it all up, and you were born lacking the spirit. Nicodemus was the whole, one of the holiest men in the physical flesh. 
He comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, what do I have to do to inherit this kingdom? How do I go to where you're going? Jesus said, ye must be born again. He says, how in the world would I ever get back in my mother's womb now that I'm old? He says, man, that which is of water is water, meaning that which is the flesh is flesh, or that which is physical is physical. This is real deep. You're all here because you've been born. But you'll only be there if you're born again. You say, well, how do I get back? You don't. He said, what's water is water. What's flesh is flesh. But what you need is a spiritual birth. You need God's spirit to be birthed inside of you. How do I get that? He says this. Whosoever shall call upon my name shall be saved. He said, if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary, was buried in your place, but rose again on the third day, you can be saved. There's two people in this world, people with God's spirit, people without it. That's it. That's it. And so this morning, as we all stand, you're coming to help me on the piano. If you're here and you've been saved, you know it. I know that I know that I know. And there, there's no doubt in my mind, preacher, I know. I know it. Well, then Christ is how you've been made whole. Christ is how you are forgiven. Christ is how you've been accepted. Christ in you is how you are going to heaven. You're here this morning and you say, preacher, I know. I know, preacher, I know. I can go back to the day or the moment in my life that I called upon Jesus and he saved me. Eyes are closed. No one's looking around. You say, preacher, there's not a doubt in my mind, not one single doubt. If I died right now, heaven would be my home because Jesus lives in me. I remember when it happened. Would you just hold your hand up proudly for a moment? Keep them up just for a second. Say, preacher, I know I'm going to heaven because Christ lives in me. Hands are still held up high. With the hands held high, you know you're going to heaven. I want you to say this. God, I know you're my home. But while I'm here, I want more of you. God, I want to give you more of me. So this is my surrender. God, I'm laying it down. I want to be used by you. Here I am. Send me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here this morning and you could not raise your hand, you don't know heaven is your home. You've never been born again. Today can be that day. I've got my altar workers, my wife, so Miss Jennifer's over here, AD's over here. I've got several ladies over here. This is what I want you to do. Listen to me just for a moment. You're here this morning, and you know. Say, preacher, I've never, been, I've never had that spirit. I've never been saved. I've never trusted Christ, but I want to today. I don't want to embarrass you. I don't want to call on your name. I want to, I'm going to ask everybody to move just here in a moment. And I promise you, a bunch of people is going to move. We're not going to call you out. We're not going to single you out. But I want you to do this. If you're a lady, come grab one of my ladies' hands. If you're a man, come grab one of my men's hands and just tell them, I need to be saved. I need what he was talking about. And we'll show you this morning how you can know. I'm going to pray. They're going to sing. And you're moving. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. Bless your people right now. Help them, God, make a decision for you. If they're saved, help them, God, today. Come forward and ask what is missing in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. You're moving right now. Come on, come on. You're moving. You're surrendering. You're laying it down. They're singing. Come on. Open your hearts this morning. Receive the Holy Spirit's presence. Get deeper. Go further. You're lost this morning. Come receive it right now. Come receive it. Sir, won't you move right now? Won't you move right now? Come get Spice hand. Come on, come on. You know you're saved. Won't you just come? Won't you come and say, God, I want to go deeper. I want to go more. I'm surrendering. God, use me. God, use me. You're here this morning. Come on, come on, move. Come on, move. Surrender, surrender. Sir, won't you move? Sir, won't you move? Man, won't you come? Come on, come on. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here How about it? How about it? Come on, come on. Down. Every you need to be saved. Come on, come on. This come trust Christ this morning. Surrender. Don't stay in your seat. Don't stay in your seat. Come on. I will be for you.
know you need it, sir. You know you need it, ma'am. Just come on, one step, one step will change your life. Come on, come on. One step, one step. Won't you surrender? Won't you surrender? Quit fighting this morning. Quit fighting. Come on. Come on. Still moving. Come on, come on. Things are happening this morning. Come on, his presence is here. How many of y'all believe he's working? Come on. How many of y'all receive it this morning? Come on, he's doing something. Sometimes making room means making time for him. Come on. We're not going to get in a hurry. Come on. So here we are, Lord. Here we are. Olivia just got saved. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Today could be your day, sir. Today could be your day, ma'am, if you'll just lay it down. If you'll just surrender, if you'll just say, God, here I am. I don't know how you would do it. I promise you, he will do it. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loved you so much, he laid down his life in your place. He that knew no sin became your sin so you could become the righteousness of God. Stop fighting him. Stop fighting him. Say, God, here I am. I surrender. They're still singing. Come on. Come on. You move. You move this morning. He wants to. to do whatever you want. Sing it now, come on. And I will make room for you. If you know to it, do sing it. Whatever you want to. to do whatever you want to. I will make room for you. To do whatever you want.
praise him. Come on. this morning love you guys so much appreciate what God's doing next week same time same place if God tarries bring a friend with you if you need to get baptized listen to me real quick August the 6th is our next baptism Sunday if you'll go to the church center app and you'll click on next steps scroll down to baptisms you can sign up right there and again baptisms obviously is for people that are saved if you've been saved you need to get baptized sign up I love you God bless you you're dismissed